unexplained infertility is an interesting category of causes because a lot of people think that it's because it's unexplained there's no reason for it. But what's critical to understand with infertility is there's always a reason for infertility. It's just a matter of how deep you look to find it. So unexplained infertility is after you've done a basic workup for infertility, which includes a hysterosalpingogram, a semen analysis, and hormones to test to see if you're ovulating, if all of those are normal, it's defined as unexplained, which means the three basic essentials have been shown to be normal, and there's about 20% of people who have something that's unexplained beyond what those three things are. So there's several primary conditions that fall into, under the category of unexplained infertility. And the best way to think of it is it's something related to the female pelvis, the most common of which is endometriosis. Of those that have unexplained infertility, 70% of them are due to endometriosis, whether they have symptoms or not. Endometriosis is a very challenging disease to diagnose because it's hidden inside the body and you can't see it by any imaging that we do often. So commonly the only way to diagnose it definitively is through a surgery, which we don't like to do unless we have to. Um, other categories would be if there's a defect of the sperm's ability to fertilize an egg. Um, other defects could be related to the uterine uh, environment. If there's a receptor issue or an egg quality issue, that might re uh, be, would fall into the category of unexplained infertility. Unexplained infertility affects about 20% of those that suffer from infertility. About 40% is due to male factors, 40% is due to female factors, which is divided between lack of ovulation or some tubal or uterine issue. So the last 20%, one in five, is due to an unexplained cause. So with unexplained infertility, a lot of people think that if you can't find an explanation, can I still have a baby? And the, abs the answer is absolutely yes. The most important thing to remember when you're overcoming infertility is that every cause is treatable. If you're unable to fix it, then you're not, then you're not appropriately finding what the cause is. As long as you have a healthy egg, a healthy sperm, and a healthy uterus, everybody will have a baby. So the key then is to identify if you have those three things, and if you don't, find that and then fix whatever is broken. For example, if you found that the egg is not healthy, you could still have a baby, but you might have to use someone else's egg or do something to try to improve the health of that egg. Similarly, if your uterus is not working, define that, make sure that that's the cause. And then there's other options that will overcome that barrier as well. Secondary infertility is just a name we call um, a situation where someone's had a successful pregnancy and then they can't get pregnant for their second or, or subsequent pregnancy. So secondary infertility is treated the exact same way as primary infertility by identifying the cause of the infertility and overcoming it. So you look at sperm factors, you look at egg factors, you look at uterine factors, find the reason. If you find it, overcome it. If it's unexplained, then you, there's an algorithm that treats all those unexplained causes. But the end point is to get a baby and to overcome whatever that barrier is. Okay.